So far, we've gotten through painting the four corporations' tags from Tag Raid, but these are far from the most iconic models from the game. We have yet to tackle the Mega Beasts, and the first up is the Storeworm. This creature runs underneath the desert floor of Kurland and is often found at the most tesium rich veins. Not unlike another monster worm thing that has some mysterious connection to an important resource that is mined by galactic nations, the model itself is big and towers over the already large tag models from the game. With such a large model, we're definitely going to speed up our painting process with the use of an airbrush. I had already given the model a grey to white zenithal priming and so I went about giving the whole model a spray with a deep purple ink, with the aim that some of the zenithal priming information will be kept as the ink has transparent qualities. I left the model for a day to let the paint cure, ready for more paint, and I wanted to go for a vibrantly coloured worm. None of the tags I painted had much in the way of red, so having that as this model's core colour would be a good contrast. So with some red ink, I sprayed from above so that there was a transition of red down to purple. Again, I left this some time to cure before returning. There are a number of beads running down the creature's body, and I imagined these to be the neo-material Tibazor that the corporations would love to harvest from its body. They also offered a chance to add some contrast, and I wanted them to look like they were glowing. A great contrast to red is green but spraying green directly onto red would make a really dank dark brown as the colours are at opposite ends of the colour wheel. Instead, to really get the green to shine, I began with white to create points of light that we could later tint green and keep them vibrant. I have to say, using the airbrush for all this work was a lot of fun, and although it can be done with a brush, the speed at which you can cover so much of the model makes learning to use an airbrush in your workflow worth the effort. With the white dry, I then loaded the airbrush with a vivid green ink and sprayed those same points again, and it allowed the green to be at its most intense at the centre and transition naturally into the red. I didn't want to overdo it with the green, so for the points of white I had sprayed onto the side, I went with a bright magenta that was closer to the red and purple, but would be brighter. This brought an end to the use of the airbrush, and I got started with the brushwork. The largest part of the model that needed attention were the large bones protruding down the spine of the creature. I decided to paint these up in bone colours and began with a brown base coat. These were then worked up to an ivory. The same approach was then used for the teeth, working from the brown base up to the ivory. With the bone work complete, I came to the green areas of the body. Using a light yellow green, I painted in the eyes and added further highlights to each of the orbs running down the body. For the magenta depressions, I added a pink to highlight them more and give greater contrast in light compared with the rest of the body. For the weird tendrils extending out the storeworm's head, there were some carapace pieces along the surface. To contrast with the red, I painted these green but didn't want them to be as bright as the other green on the body, so I reduced the contrast by mixing grey in and creating a muted green. With much of the model painted, the head was not drawing enough attention, when it should have been. To make it more interesting, I went with painting the extended mandible jaws a cool purple, leaning more into the blue spectrum rather than red, with the intent to pull attention and get some more detail in the face. This went from a dark cool purple up to a light blue purple for the highlights and I was pretty happy with the added colour variants. I then stepped away from the creature and started on the base by giving it a coat of a warm dark brown. This was then dry brushed using a combination of a makeup brush and piece of packing sponge with a golden brown and ivory. When I returned to the main body of the creature, I used a brush to add highlights where necessary to the reds, magentas and purples. However, I was feeling the creature was still looking rather flat and uninteresting in colour variants and contrast. To add some interest, I planned on adding contrast along the crests of each chitinous plating. Following the edges and making line strokes towards the edge of each plate with golden brown and yellow, it helped build up what looked like a natural pattern 
and helped highlight each of the plates forming across its body. I was really happy with the effect, but then I realised just how many plates were on this thing and the long and laborious work of painting each plate began and eventually ended with a pleasing result. To continue to build definition in the model, I used a dark purple wash to recess shade many areas of the model and then highlight again with lighter shades of purple. Previously, my painting of the eyes was pretty awful and looked a bit cartoonish. I decided to try and jewel the eyes by building layers from dark green to jade and finally yellow for where I wanted the worm to be looking. To finish the jeweling, white was spotted on the opposite side of the yellow deep in the dark green to sell the effect. I think you can agree that these eyes were much better and look a lot less cartoonish. The worm itself was then finished, but the base needed a little more work. I wanted the rocks in the centre to be a different colour from the desert floor. I still wanted them to feel like they were part of the desert, so I kept the brown base to tie it together with the sand. However, Rather than dry brushing golden brown to ivory, I used greys up to white with a light blue mixed in as well. The desaturated blue helped give a cooler colour to the rocks than the warm sand and gave contrast without heavy saturation, making it a subtle effect that also wouldn't draw the eye away from the worm itself, which is what I want the viewer to be looking at. And here is the store worm in all its glory. This was the first time for me to paint such a big model and it was a lot of fun. It certainly wasn't perfect as I feel the purple I began with was too dark and made it difficult to bring the saturation up. The head as well does not pull enough attention and so my feeling when looking at the finished piece is that it does not have a natural balance. Conversely, I really like the patterns across the plates and the glowing green orbs adding lots of contrast. I hope you enjoyed the painting and if you thought this was a big miniature, Wait until you see the Steindrager. Man, that thing is crazy big. But that will be for the next video. See you there.